Ah, the ugly green chair again. But I've got some good information that I'm sure that you will be pleased that I've passed on. Several questions. Um, one is Aaron Luna. Yes, I'm going to show you a close-up of the tips on this. They constrict even more going into that area where there's so much leverage they don't really want to bend. Just simple. You almost need non-existent um, sinew collars, really. It's just if you have tight on strings or a, like a choking loop kind of a thing, they grip so tight that it's not going to take mo much sinew to go over that. And so that really is it. You have to be willing to tie the string onto the bow every time. And these also work with sinew strings. And so it's a, a nice alternative to having heavier tips. Reducing mass in the bow also goes in to the cross section. Now figure it, picture in your mind if you will, kind of a, a half circle, kind of a squashed lenticular kind of a shape. And so it might be a little taller throughout the limb than if this was rectangular, but you're removing so much mass from the edges because of the lenticular shape um, that you're going to have lighter limbs. So this is good. This is why I'm not necessarily a fan of decrowning anymore, having just flat. Especially if you're sinew backing or rawhide, the, the wood is usually a little stronger in tension than compression. Different woods work differently. But you can get away with having a crown. It reduces weight overall. Strengthening it gives it more snap too, I believe, because you're stressing the ball in a way that it's able to. And even though you would think that along these edges, it's so thin, it's not doing much. If you were to look at the neutral plane, which is above that, you're actually utilizing the compression, um, the loading of compression along this whole edge, even though it looks like it's not doing anything because it's thin, because the neutral plane is above. And so it's a, it's a tasty bit of engineering. Next up, let's. Can, this is a board bow. But if you were to flip this over, and I hope you can see the shine on this, a couple coats of spar urethane finished up with sanding up to 2,000 grit. So this is polished. This is, this is shiny. This is nice. But because I was able to score a flat sawn, plain sawn, kind of the same thing, board that was basically a growth ring, when I'm looking at this, if you're a bow maker, you notice the difference. It's, not a thing to have a bias ring or, you know, lines running up here, but it's very satisfying to see the feathering of the growth rings. And so I would challenge anybody, I would never know. Looking at this, I would not know that this home guard was not made from state. Just because of my choice of wood for this. And Jerry, hopefully you're watching this, the turtle paddle bow, I found a beautiful board I can get to bows side by side, uh, flat sawn, plain sawn, growth ring, it follows a growth ring, like, this. so the two paddle bows are going to look like growth ring bows. So there's a turtle bow, and then I believe Dan was hunting up one of my paddle bows, so two paddle bows. Next up, a question of sinew bow strings. Lucius, I'm picking on you. You have to be aware of that. I'll pick on you if you ask me questions. But we're all friends here. You notice my comments? <laughs> it's a good group of people. Let's, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. This is not sinew. This is hemp. But figure that you have stripped your sinew into like little tiny bundles like this. Contrast that with if you just coarsely did it. I've got a, a piece of sinew not stripped into these bundles, just a piece of sinew here, piece of sinew here. And if I was to do the two ply reverse twists with these bigger things, do, do like, then I have to add some more and there's a big junction there where this um, sinew goes onto this one. And so I run the risk of oh, that string just pulling apart. However, considering the ultimate strength of this, this little single strand of sinew is incredibly strong, maybe even more so than dental floss. So I strip when I'm doing 
leg tendon bowstrings. It's a little different if you're doing back strap because there's a lot less involved because it's a lot longer. But I do a twist, then add a little fiber here, and this helps me keep it even in size too. Maybe add one, maybe not. This one is a little narrower, so I'm going to add some sinew. Just because I don't want to have it like this, I want to have it short, less short, a little longer, longer. So each one of these plies as I'm lengthening it are not just butt-ended like this. Add a fiber, add maybe three fibers here, but stagger them. And so what I'm doing with my sinew bowstring is that there isn't just like... I'm going to separate these. Hopefully it'll be easier to understand. Sometimes I am hard to understand. I won't have... Picture these are together and they're twisted. Two things. I won't have a, a junction on this one, just a single one, and then a little further out of junction on this one. There will be junction, 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 junction all along it. So if you were to look at this string, I've got little fibers running the whole length of it. And so that maximizes the strength of that string because it's not just a limited number of where one stops and another one joins. It's like stopping and joining the whole length on a very small scale. Now there's also a question brought up by this fine young man um, regarding could it have been that them taking your string and soaking it in hide glue could have weakened it somehow. Maybe it was the hide glue was overcooked or whatever. No. <laughs> Because there are different ways to do it. Some people put their strings together, especially if it's back strap, wet. You just strip it out and it's wet and stick it together. Um, stretch it between two things, gently stretching or else and, and let it dry and there you go. But I work my strings dry. I'm very careful to twist them very tightly, not getting too much, too much of a twist. What, a twist I have is tight, but I'm not trying to have it like <laughs> the whole thing so it's just, you know, tight, tight, like a guitar string. Because that ultimately can lose some strength. But, regardless, I will soak. I will run my string. I've got my little pot of not thick high glue, but thin high glue so it penetrates better. And keep in mind, my strands were pounded and stripped. And so they're ready to soak up stuff, run it through there, just dipping it in there the whole length. And then with a couple of clothes pens, I use clothes pens, just hold it on either end, just pull it, stretch it a little bit. It'll stretch after you break it in, of course, or before you break it in. Um, but just let it dry like that. And that high glue does not weaken it, it strengthens it. It strengthens it. Next up, okay, I'm. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Keith, you're warned. If you want to ruin your surprise, I'll give you a few minutes here. Turn off the video because this is an important thing. I have a project for a friend, and it's beautiful longbow. He's taken lots of deer off of it, or from it. But he wanted me to take this bow and remove. He painted it and wasn't too thrilled with it. You know, we all do that. We'll, take in a project, do something, and probably more often than not, we're not really thrilled with it. Um, so he wanted me to take this and add some mojo to it. So I took the paint off of it, very gently sanding. It's not 80 grit. I mean, I started at 320 and being very careful because I didn't want to work my way into the glass layers. Finished it up, I don't know, with 600. Oh, are you coming in? Oh, I'm doing a video. <laughs> so I'm looking at it, and this looks like horn. That looks exactly like horn. And a back bow, horn is a natural thing. So I'm going to take this, and this is just going to be black. It's going to look like horn. So back is taken care of. The front, however, small rattlesnake skins and small rattlesnakes because the diamond pattern would get lost um, if they were bigger. 
And I asked Mike Yancey, it's like, hey, can you glue rattlesnake skins onto a fiberglass bone? He goes, oh yeah, a lot of people do it. I'm like, what do you use? And he was like, tight bond. It's <laughs> like, wow. So I've got this um, not polished to a point with the 2000 grit or whatever. It goes up to, I don't know, what did I say, 400, something like that. There and about. And so it should make a nice surface. Gonna, when they come, glue that rattlesnake on here and then probably just uh, spar your thing over it. And so that's going to work out. Hopefully, we'll see. I'll let you know. Tight bond is miracle stuff. Hopefully, it won't peel up. And that is that. My wife is coming out here, so I'm going to cut this off and say, I'm done. Thank you for watching. Hope I answered some questions, maybe raised some new questions you weren't even thinking of.